but again, getting that 6-0 is going to be absolutely huge. Yes, and I think this is going to be a very interesting match as well because both of our players here are actually rocking toolbox type <laughs> decks as well if you want to jump into these a little exactly. bit. Exactly, so show. Alex Shermansky here is playing some sort of uh, water toolbox style deck that yes. does depend on shady dealings in Talion. Yes, you heard me right. Something you, you know, that was very prevalent a couple of formats ago, something that has been, you know, not so much now that we have the Lost Zone type decks. Uh, you know, shady dealings in Talion was the deck to play, was the engine to build. And uh, that's exactly what Alex Shemansky is bringing here, along with a slew of toolbox Pokemon. And he's playing against Makani Trans, Arceus, Espeon VMAX, Alolan Vulpix, Evil Tall Flying Pikachu. Uh, yeah, there's a quite lot. Quite a bit. There's a lot in there. <laughs> so uh, Arceus, and Arceus and Friends for sure. And uh, yeah, again, it, it's interesting here, right? Both these decks are toolbox style decks. Yep. Something I'm sure that they are toolboxing against is Lugia decks. Yep. Unfortunately, they're not playing Lugia right now. <laughs> <laughs> that is unfortunate indeed. They're not playing Lugia. They're playing a very technical deck here. Let's take a look at the prize cards. Oh no, two Sobbles for Alex. <laughs> two Sobbles, but then I, I did see two, two double turbo energies prize there for yeah. Mahani. Looks like the yes. game has started here. All right, so let's jump in to our round six of our Charlotte, North Carolina regional event here for the TCG. Both our players are ready to go. We're starting over on Makani Trans side here with a quick ball, a quick, quick ball here. Of course, that Radiant Gardevoir as well in the active position as yes. of now. Radiant Gardevoir does protect uh, Makani's Pokemon from Pokemon Vs. It lessens the damage by 20. I'm sure that matters. A, definitely a very helpful Radiant Pokemon. Not something you see every day, but the math definitely comes, uh, definitely matters, especially maybe something like Mew VMAX, forcing them to use a couple more power tablets maybe to get knockouts on Arceus, uh, Arceus V-Star, uh, essentially making Arceus V-Star 300 HP. Uh, we do see Makani does find themselves the Arceus V there. Again, very important card in the Arceus deck. It is the one that's going to get the ball rolling. Uh, you're All he's going to need here, an energy for turn, Arceus V-Star, and he'd be good. So if he finds the energy, that's a good turn for me. Yeah, that is a, the consistency that you want to see. You want to get that energy down on to the Arceus. Did you get a look at the hand at all, Wancho, for Makani? The starting hand? I didn't quite see it. It was way too quick. Again, I was... <laughs> I know, we'll I know. These it. players we'll are moving fast, <laughs> that's for sure. We'll see it shortly here, yes. for sure. We do see the energy. It's going to be the psychic energy. Beautiful energy, by the oh, way. Oh, yeah, Love look those. at that one. Ooh. I do see the Alolan Vulpix, and it's something... Do you think it... I'm not quite sure if that Pokemon is going to be useful in this matchup necessarily. Lilin Vulpix does protect you from Pokemon with ability abilities with this no Mirage attack. But uh, again, Alex Shemansky has a slew of Pokemon to attack with. Uh, again, Crabominable. Crab Crabominable, <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, that, that Pokemon comes to mind for sure to take big knockouts. Let's see how Alex... Uh, Alex sets up here, and you know, if you're playing Irida on your first turn, I think you're going to have a good time. Yeah, I definitely think so as well. Being able to search out that water Pokemon and an item card, always nice to see for sure. And Alex, of course, going second here in this match means that there is going to be that supporter that Makani didn't get to play. So leading with that Irida, always nice to see, is going to be searching through the deck and realizing that there are two Sobble in the prize cards over on Alex's side here. Of course, there is four Sobble in deck. Um, total, but it's always nice because when you go second and you're playing an Italian engine, it's always great to um, be able to keep calling more Sobble onto the field because that that's true. kind of the engine of your deck. You're using your Drizzile, you're using your Italian to search out those cards that you need throughout the deck. But when you don't have the Sobble, it's, uh, <laughs> it gets a little more intricate there. You're dealing with a lot less cards throughout the match, but this Articuno is going to be what is searched out here along with a Capacious Bucket, very popular pick that we see, which is going to to go straight back into the deck for two water energy and one is going to be attached there onto that sobble even if there um isn't isn't able to uh will still be will be able to keep calling one more sobble out of the deck um as well as that snom yeah too. Very, very important card in this matchup for sure i mean very important card for the deck snom is yes yeah. evolves to frost moth 
is generally your way to get your energy acceleration. It yep. gets to attach uh, as many basic water energy to your Pokemon in the bench as you like. And we do see the keep calling, just like you said. Unfortunately, not too many uh, Sobble squad in the <laughs> in the deck. Just finds that one yes. Sobble. But, you know, maybe Alex here can make do with just two. One Sobble's better than zero Sobble. That's what I got to say here. <laughs> but yeah, definitely getting all of those Pokemon out that are going to need those evolutions in the following turn. So pretty great here. And then, of course, the energy is already on that Sobble. So there is the pivot there for Alex Shemansky as well. We're back over to Makani's side of the field here. So we did, like we said, see that energy attachment on to the Arceus V there. It was just a single energy. It wasn't a, a double turbo here. But hey. Now you got the V-Star that you're evolving into, of course, searched out by that Ultra Ball, discarding another two cards. So now we have both the Vulpix V and V-Star in the discard pile as of now for Makani. So just a little bit of fodder there. And we're going to go jump right back into the deck here with that Starbirth V-Star power. Only one of these can be used per game. So this is an important one. Of course, it does search out any card from the deck for Makani, which for is sure. huge. For sure, and I, I did, get to, uh, get, did get to see what Makani decided to pick, and it was the Air Balloon and a Marnie, so a supporter for turn. Does maybe show that, is there a double turbo in hand just to get yep. the attack going with the RCSV star? Nope, we're going to see the Marnie here shuffling up, and uh, yeah, good equalizer as well. Again, he's going to be Absolutely. looking for the double turbo energy, so he can start going, he can start attacking, start taking prizes, and... Uh, and power up a backup Pokemon. It looks like it is going to be the Alolan Vulpix, though, but doesn't mm -hmm. find the double turbo energy. Uh, yep, but yeah, there is a 2-2 two -two line of that Vulpix in the deck here. So even though two, uh, the V and the V-Star are in the discard pile, there's still more in the deck there for Makani, but it's just going to be that V-Guard energy attachment. Of course, that that uh, Starbirth did get any two cards, and it was that Marnie and the Air Balloon, kind of a uh, saving grace here for Makani, hopefully in the upcoming turns, but not being able to power up uh, is unfortunate. And we're back over to Alex Shemansky's side. So Alex is now going to have another turn to kind of establish their board state as well, which is pretty big when you're playing uh, this specific <laughs> deck. Exactly. Uh, luckily, the Sobble in the active did survive the turn, and yep. uh, so that We'll have two uh, Drizzles to work with. They did play the Irida. Again, absolutely perfect supporter in this water, to water toolbox deck, right? Irida finds you a water Pokemon and an item card. And if that water Pokemon could be, well, right now, Alex did search for the Ice Dance Frost Moth. Uh, again, very key card in strategy. But again, he could always use that later in the game to evolve into Drizzle. Essentially find yourself two items. Oh. <laughs> And, I uh, did that yesterday in our GLC game. I put the wrong evolution. <laughs> Alex almost put the Frostmoth onto the Sobble. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. But yeah, here we go. So this, like I was I was talking about an established board, and that is what we were seeing here from Alex Shabansky's side. The Frostmoth Definitely. coming out here. Uh, the two energy being placed on to that Articuno Ooh, as and well. So you can have the ball. So we're going to see a little bit. Yeah. At least one more Sobble hit the field for sure. Yeah, that's huge, actually. Uh, getting another Sobble out. I mean, like we've said, these Sobble, Drizzle, and Talion engines are so critical in these decks. So getting another Sobble out is awesome here on Alex Shemansky's side. Definitely a uh, card that you want to see if you have some uh, basic Pokemon in the prize cards. So, of course, grabbing that Sobble, replacing it with the Heavy Ball, reshuffling the prize cards and placing them back out here now. The Drizzle, of course, was evolved into for the turn as well. And now it is being pivoted out. And here we go. We're going to get some Articuno <laughs> action from Alex Shemansky. Wild Freeze, absolutely powerful attack, leaving the Radiant Gardevoir paralyzed now. Something of note, uh, Makani only plays one escape rope. That is the only way out yeah. to retreat the Gardevoir. And does realize that, just straight past there, back to Alex Shemansky. Alex Shemansky now finding the Evolution Incense, gets the Inteleon, and you know, Inteleon gets you even more things, gets you more cards. And this is, this is the original train. You know, we're used yeah. to Comfy train by now. Uh, flower, flower, flower gathering, selecting. selecting, sorry, and then picking it up with a scoop up net. But this is the original searching the deck, getting so much value with just your scoop up nets. And we're going to mm -hmm. see the Radiant Alakazam. 
Yeah, things are going swell here on Alex's side. And that's just how you see this deck play out here. That Articuno um, just paralyzing for each turn, buying these turns, establishing the board state. And of course, you know, you have to mention as well, there are two prize Pokemon in this deck for Alex Shemansky, but it also runs very heavily as a one prize deck. So you're just putting another obstacle in front of your opponent as far as having to really grind through to get those prize cards. And here we go, that emergency <laughs> jelly coming out here. We saw the Inteleon into a double uh, shady dealings two trainer cards from the deck, and that was just scooped right back out. Sobble hits the bench again. Drizzile comes out to get another trainer card here on Alex Shemansky's side. I mean, Alex Shemansky is just operating this deck um, fully for you on the stream here today. For, for sure, just so much value for each move that Alex yep. is doing here. And uh, something I I love to see is the, the Radiant Alakazam is not something you see every day. That is definitely a way that to manipulate damage on the board. Yeah. Uh, looks like he is just going to attack there with the Wild Freeze, getting making use of the Wild Jelly as well. When you have 30 HP or less, you heal 120, I believe. The Emergency Jelly. Yes, so yes. De essentially making that Articuno have full HP, and there it is, just a knockout yeah. on the Radiant Gardevoir. And that, that is the engine here with that Articuno. You're paralyzing each turn. You're healing yourself, even though you do take that damage as well. And uh, I guess I should just note, too, the air balloon was on that um, Radiant Gardevoir. But of course, with a status condition like Paralysis, you do have to have that switching card, not a hard retreat option. And of course, that air balloon just contributes to the hard retreat there. So if anybody's confused about that, that is why. But hey, we've been checking out these shady dealings in Teleon. But let's check out some quick shooting in Talion <laughs> as well. Being drawn out of the deck here with that Irida that was searched out last turn by Alex Shemansky. And then a level ball as well, which of course level ball can search for a Pokemon out of the deck that's 90 HP or less. A huge target for that is usually the Drizzile. So Alex is just is, uh, He's doing well. Control. He's yes. in complete control. If you, if the game... <laughs> the game has been really, really fast, actually. It is, actually. Uh, it's going quick. With the paralysis, Makani just passing if they can't find the retreat. But just to talk about Alex's uh, deck strategy real quick, just because it's a very unorthodox deck, and just as I do, uh, just as we talk about it, back to Alex Shemansky there. So he's really oh utilizing the the Wild Freeze on the Articuno. Not only the par paralysis factor, but the fact that th there's damage counters on the Articuno. That means the painful... Painful Spoons on the Radiant Alakazam, yep. you get to make use of that damage, spread it out, and take knockouts, key knockouts at, at your the leisure. The correct time. When you want to. You don't yeah. want to break the Paralysis Lock. That's why you also have the Quick Shooting in Talions. So you have those the 20 from that, the 20 from the Radiant Alakazam. You can even uh, scoop up net that Quick Shooting in Talion, put it on another. So you have a lot of ways to manipulate the damage so you're taking the knockouts at the most opportune time. And Alex Shemansky here has just been doing it absolutely perfectly. It is an, it's a master class to see. Again, Absolutely. very unorthodox deck. And there we go. We see Paralysis there on the Alolan Vulpix. But something Makani could do here is evolve the, the Alolan Vulpix. When yes. you evolve a Pokemon, it does get rid of the, the status, status conditions. conditions. So yes. that is definitely a way to retreat here. Yeah, and I mean, we've been talking so much about Alex's deck because, I mean, I think a majority of the time in the turns has been on Alex's <laughs> side of the field. But we need to talk about Makani real quick and hear what's been going on. And that is pretty much a whole bunch of nothing. It's being stuck in paralysis here, not being able to attach any other energy, I might add, oh, as well, true. for each of the turns Makani has taken. Uh, but now we are finally at least seeing something happen here. Luminion being benched here to get a supporter. We're going to see the real research. Quick Escape rope, absolutely huge. Again, that is their one out to switch. That is the one, right? <laughs> yes, the one. The that only is, one. <laughs> Got to make use of it for sure. Uh, Alex promoting the Radiant Alakazam there. So we're finally going to see some prizes uh, taken yes. here by Makani. We're also finally going to see go. some energy acceleration. Let's see if they can get back into it. There's a double turbo energy. Absolutely. That is uh, one of the things we were looking for a little bit late here, unfortunately, on Makani Turin's side of the field uh, right now. Could have just been any other energy, I suppose, attached there. So now it's buffing, a, or sorry, nerfing, I should say, a little bit of the damage there on that Arceus V-Star, which is great to note. But Ultra Ball here is going to discard two cards into the discard pile and search out another Pokemon. Now we have the Espeon V coming into play here. And we're just going to see that Trinity 
Heidi at Nova, which is going to search another uh, uh, several energies out of the deck here and attach them to the V Pokemon on bench. So that's why we see an energy there on Luminion V and an energy on that Espeon V as well. And but the Volpix. I just have to talk about this real quick. That Espeon V is probably the most key Pokemon in this entire matchup. Uh, Espeon V evolves into Espeon V Max, who has the Solar Re Revelation ability. It prevents effects prevents all effects of attacks from your opponent's Pokemon to all your Pokemon that have energy. So as long as there's energy, you're technically yeah. protected from the paralysis on that Articuno. And guess what I see there, Wancho? There's energy on everything right now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Makani setting up the board, saying that, you know what? You got too many turns with the paralysis. That's not going to happen anymore. <laughs> yeah, of course we do <laughs> need to find see. Yeah, I was about to say, we do need to see the VMAX there. Right now, it's just an SV on V, but there is so much potential there for Makani here. So definitely playing it to the outs as well. Over back on Alex's side, of course, taking a quick look at Makani's discard pile, making sure um, that Alex is keeping track of the switch outs that have been used here. And of course, we are going to see that paralysis go through as of now here. And I don't believe, even if you evolve into the VMAX, it doesn't take away no, the status no. condition. It just prevents, it prevents going it. forward. Yes. So, so that Argus V-Star right now is still paralyzed. And of course, we did use the single, the only switching out card already from Makani's side of the field. Exactly. So Alex here has some time to breathe. He has one turn here, one turn of paralysis, which just happened. So it's back to Alex's turn. And he has... <laughs> that was quick. <laughs> I know. There's so much damage on board, though. Yes. Alex only ha Alex has, still has to take five prizes, but the Alolan Vulpix V-Star has a lot of damage. The, Ar uh, the Arceus does have still 200 HP. Yep. Um, I think it's now time for Alex to really reevaluate his game plan here. Maybe uh, yeah. Articuno has done his job. It's time for the rest of the toolbox. And I, I'm... Very excited to see here. What comes out. Exactly. And uh, with shady dealings happening right now from the Drizzile, the world is Alex Shemansky's oyster. Again, he access to pretty much anything in his deck. Well, any trainer, it looks like he's opting for a second quick shooting in Talion. Now he has 40 damage to play with each turn. Yeah. Yeah, I think the quick shooting is actually going to come into play uh, majorly here for Alex. Chipping away at those Pokemon on the bench or, or really anywhere on the field with that quick shooting is going to be essential to take those multi-prize exactly. knockout I turns. Mean, the uh, Alolan Vulpix Beastar, I believe, only has 10 HP remaining. So definitely that that's two prizes Alex can take pretty much any time he wants. We're going to see a boss's orders here for the Drizzile. Very smart play here by Makani, limiting Alex's board, right? That's the last Drizzile that can evolve in into a Shady Dealings. The other two Drizziles have already evolved to Inteleons. So now Alex doesn't have the luxury of going through or finding items from their deck, unless they play Irida, of course. And uh, we're going to see here Alex just promote the Articuno once again. Something of note, though, there's already 100 damage on that Articuno. If he decides to attack again, if he decides to Wild Freeze, it is going to get knocked out. But because of the Cape of Toughness, that adds 50 HP there to the Articuno. So that should buy Alex Shemansky some time here. We're going to see a quick shooting, taking a knockout there on the Alolan Vulpix. Uh, Alex Shemansky goes down to three prize cards. And... Yeah, very, very close game here. Makani, still, Makani has four to Alex's three. No, no more shady dealings for Alex. Have to wonder what else he has going here. Yeah, definitely. No more shady dealings here because we got those quick shooters on the board. <laughs> but uh, yes, we are back over onto Makani's side of the field here now. Oh, no, it's still I believe it's, it's still, still Alex's Alex. yeah, turn. He, it okay. was just a quick shooting. So, got uh, it. Yeah, Alex now decides to play the Clara. So definitely a way to get back some Sobbles. Looks like, yeah, it's going to be Sobbles and a couple of energy. Uh, something of note, you, uh, Alex can actually decide to attack with the Inteleons as well. Very viable attackers. The quick shooting Inteleon does do 120 damage if he gets another one in play. Unfortunately, the quick shooting does less damage. Opts to attack instead with the, with the Articuno with 150 damage now on the Articuno. 
Absolutely. So we're going to see that damage go through. Of course, no paralysis thanks to Espeon VMAX. Now we're back on to Makani's side of the field, starting off with the Marnie here. So both players, all those cards that were in hand for both players are going to the bottom of their decks. Now Makani's going to drive it and draw into five cards while Alex is going to draw into four. And then we're just going to see the quick knockout here now. Finally, that Articuno goes down. Makani going down another prize card. Four still, sorry, three still left to take here on Makani's side and back over to Alex Jemanski. So, yes. I mean, I guess, so is this like a good time for Crab or what? <laughs> <laughs> you, you could, but right now, you, you know, just sorry, just doing the, the quick, quick shooting is yep. enough to take a knockout there on the Arsis Vsar, which we see exactly bringing Alex Jemanski down to one. Yep. Now would be a good time to crab, but then there's no way to get damage on well, you, board. Yeah, I was about to say, you have to have damage on the board for crab. Of course, I a uh, <laughs> little bit of a joke there, because I'm always just trying to take out that crab uh, <laughs> from the deck here. But <laughs> yes, all right. So yeah, but no, Alex is, is cleaning things up, even with just those quick shootings here, going Ooh. down to one prize card. So only one left to take. Of course, these are all V Pokemon. Well, one being a V Max uh, on Makani's side of the field. So they're going to be beefier HPs here. So I'm excited to see what Alex chooses to go into as far as um, the the attacking main attacking Pokemon. Looks like he's opting for the Milk Ooh, Tank Bear. Okay. Very good attacker with the Miracle Body ability. Prevents all damage done to this Pokemon by attacks from Pokemon V. And that's exactly what Makani has in play. <laughs> no yes. other attackers there. And that is going that, to be it. What a game. Not going to lie. Abu, uh, that was such yes. a pro level game, right? <laughs> it was happening so fast that it was it was really, really hard to keep up. You know? <laughs> yes, absolutely. But that's what you're going to see out of both of these players, Makani Tran and Alex Shemansky, both players we've seen plenty of times before. That match, uh, it was still back and forth there for these players throughout that entire game. So that was awesome to see.